My friends, we are going to grow and get better together. This is not about me. This is about us. Welcome to Win Today with Johnny Martin. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back. Another episode of Win Today with your boy, Johnny Martin, as always, in studio. And special thanks to good friends, Donnie Cavanaugh from Seven Roads Media. What's up, Donnie? Hey, John. How's it going? Things are good. Life is good, man. Also with us in studio is our good man, Dylan Pilon from Cloud9 Marketing Group. What's up, D? What's going on, John? How are you? Uh, life is good, man. Thank John, you. before you start, yeah. uh, Dylan's going to snap a picture of you to put on your social media profiles. Yeah, I don't really want one done today, though. I don't. Like I think that. it would be good, though. You do? Yeah. Why? So and if, speaking of those social media profiles, where can we find you at, John? You can find me at Real John C. Martin, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now LinkedIn. LinkedIn, key. Yeah, I'm excited. that's key right there. Major key. I'm excited about that. And I think uh, <laughs> not to get away from your content because I, okay. I've already read the show notes and I'm I'm pretty excited to hear it, but. Very shortly, you're going to be changing your Facebook page. Correct. From a personal page to a uh, Dylan, our marketing genius. To a uh, public figure page. Public figure. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah, hopefully uh, all the same folks that have been with me along this ride stay with me, and hopefully we pick up a, a bunch more along the way. For sure. So uh, before we get into the content today, I just wanted to share with you guys, I know we talked a little bit before the episode started, had a chance last night to be a guest of a podcaster, which was an awesome experience. Um, a gentleman's name is Scott, and he runs what's called the Ordinary Marathoner. Uh, and so went in last night, talked to him a little bit about what he's doing with the Ordinary Marathoner. We talked leadership, motivation, uh, training. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a great vehicle for me to share my message. Uh, but also I had a chance to learn a lot from a dude that um, is pretty impressive. You know, we talk a lot on this show about how people let the stuff stand in their way that isn't really all that important. And this is a guy who's found a way to navigate uh, this journey called life, but also uh, in his late 30s and into his early 40s, which, which I have so much respect for, has run now six marathons and has completed two full Ironmans. For those of you that don't know, a marathon in and of itself would be difficult enough. It's 26.2 miles. But this dude had now full-time job, well over 40 hours a week, raises an eight-year-old daughter, uh, all of the other responsibilities that go along with life, and he has run six of them. Plus, over the last two years, has run uh, two full Ironmans. And so for people that don't know what that is, you start off with a swim. And I might not get the distance exactly right, but I think it's 1.2 miles in the water. Then um, you get on a bike, and it's a 100-mile bike ride, I think, a 100-mile bike ride, and then you run a full marathon, and that's all in a day's work, and so uh, it's pretty pretty amazing. John, I just looked it up. Yeah. 2.4-mile swim. So double the number I just gave you. Yep. 112-mile bike ride, and then your, your 26.2-mile marathon. So crazy. And for me, the biggest takeaway, guys, was, you know, we talk about... The, the every man or the every woman that's just working to maximize their potential and purpose. Uh, this is a dude who has no formal training in, um, you know, extreme swimming, biking or running, uh, but got into this sort of as a, as a passion and a hobby after college. And when he started working and now has completed six uh, marathons and two Ironmans has another one coming up in five months. So it was a, it was a great chat and an awesome segue actually into what we're going to discuss today. Uh, and one of the things that I really thought a lot about uh, in putting this segment together in this show for today, and I'm going to reference the work uh, a lot during the episode of probably the foremost authority in this field, but I asked myself two questions around this topic, and those questions ended up coming up a lot more as I did my research. But the first question I asked myself was, who are the most successful and significant people in any room? So any room you walk into, I don't, I don't care where you go, you go to a holiday party, you go to work, you go to a sporting event, anywhere you go, one of the things I ask myself a lot as I survey the room is, who are the most successful and significant people in this room and why are they that way? And a lot of us 
you know, I don't know about you guys, but for me, a lot of times those assumptions center around their education, their upbringing, their access to resources, their intelligence, their overall IQ. All of these things would factor in to, some, to somebody's ability to be successful or significant. That would help us answer that why question. So as I started to dig in to this topic a little bit more, um, I really want to spend some time referencing the work of a doctor by the name of Angela Lee Duckworth. Uh, and we are talking today, folks, about something that I think we do not spend enough time thinking about. And more importantly, we don't spend enough time understanding that we can cultivate this in our own lives. We can water this seed and this seed will grow. And that's the topic of grit. We've heard our entire lives about those kids, the haves and have nots, right? We've heard about, and we've heard this old adage so many times, that kid's just got it. Or you either have it or you don't. And what we're learning is that's just not true. The notion of grit as it is displayed in our life is something that we cannot minimize and we need to do a better job of tapping into. So let me talk to you a little bit about this fascinating work that uh, Angela Lee Duckworth did. I was first turned on to her years ago. She did a, a TED Talk. And the TED Talk was five years, almost five years ago now. It was April of 2013. She did a talk on grit. And as of this podcast, she has over 13 million views on that six minute TED talk. If you don't take away anything from this podcast today, and if I don't do good enough justice of explaining Dr. Duckworth's work, check out that TEDx or that TED talk from Angela Lee Duckworth on grit. And we'll attach it to yeah, the show we'll notes. Yeah, we'll link that in the show notes. She's also written a book by the same name. It's called Grit, Passion, and Perseverance. Uh, and she can be found at AngelaDuckworth.com. Some background on her, which to me, really explains that the work that this woman is doing is truly from a place of passion and purpose. She was a global corporate consultant, traveled the world and consulted with huge companies. She walked away from that work and started teaching seventh grade math in New York City. Um, for those of you that are listening that don't know a whole lot about the New York City public schools, uh, it is a very, very tough place to work for a lot of reasons. Through her work in teaching math in the seventh grade public schools, she wanted to see what the difference maker was for some of the kids in her classes. She wanted to find out why some of her students were the most successful and significant people in her classroom and why others were falling short. So after a few years of teaching uh, middle school math, she decided to become a psychologist and she wanted to find the answers scientifically and practically to those two questions. Who are the most successful people in any room and why? What she did to find this information though is awesome. She studied people from all different walks of life from all over this country. She went to West Point, the United States Military Academy, and she studied West Point cadets and tried to determine, based on the entering freshman class and the research she was doing, she tried to determine in an environment where those young men and women represent the best, brightest, and most well-rounded students from across the United States that are going to end up representing our army as officers. She wanted to see which ones were going to rise to the top and which ones were not going to make it. She went to the National Spelling Bee. And she tried to predict, based on her interviews with students, which students were going to uh, win or make it significantly through the spelling bee and which ones were not. She interviewed and studied salespeople, first-year teachers, literally people from all walks of life to try and predict who those people were going to be that would answer her two most important questions. Remember, who were the most successful people in any room and why? And here's what she shared that was mind-blowing. So she was expecting 
like what we shared to start the show, she was expecting that IQ, social intelligence, appearance, health, wealth, would all be the greatest predictors of somebody's success. And the why would be answered in that way. None of those things, if measured against people that had them in equal numbers, none of those things stuck out as strongly as grit. So for those of you that are listening and you don't know what grit is, a lot of people think grit is achieving a goal. And it's more than that. Grit is much more than that. Grit is passion and perseverance towards long-term goals. And when I say long-term goals, in some cases, we're talking about not weeks or months. We're talking about years, decades, or even a lifetime. This really explains to a lot of us why many people fall short of their long-term goals because they lack grit. Passion and perseverance towards long-term goals. The willingness to run the marathon, to see the job through. And here's the biggest piece. We live in a world where people fear failure. People that have grit, people that are gritty people, they not only understand that failure will happen along the way, they accept failure, they build in provisions for failure, uh, and they embrace failure as a way to grow. Grit creates this passion and purpose for everything that these successful people do. Why do I think it's so important to share it with you folks? Because we all have it to some degree, but we can create more of it in our own lives. And it doesn't cost a thing except for our willingness to work really hard, to get uncomfortable, and to expect that we're going to fail along the way. Grit has nothing to do with talent. It has nothing to do with luck. And it has nothing to do with how intensely you want something for the short term. Grit has nothing to do with those things. Grit has so much more to do with your willingness to dig in for the long term. Your willingness to dig in when it seems like you cannot possibly achieve your goal. So in Angela Duckworth's work, she has a great website. There's something called a grit test. I would encourage, or a grit scale, I would encourage all of you to take it. So you guys, I want, Donnie, I want you and Dylan to take it as well. And it's 10 questions. There's five responses, all similar responses for every question. And it's going to reflect how passionate and persistent you consider yourself to be. That's why it's so important that you're honest when you do this assessment. It's scored on a scale of zero to five. And I'm going to go through some of the questions with you, but I want to explain to all of you that are listening how this scale works. 10 questions, they all have the same responses. These are the responses. This idea sounds very much like me, mostly like me, somewhat like me, not much like me, or not like me at all. So I tried to answer this as long as I can, and the questions varied. The first question was, new ideas and projects sometimes distract me from previous ones. So are you one of those people that's very impulsive and as soon as something new comes up, you jump on it and that distracts you from something that you were working on before? Another question in the scale was setbacks don't discourage me. I don't give up easily. Well, for some people, setbacks discourage them to the point where they quit and no longer want to go after that thing that they thought they were passionate about. And this is why, folks, passion and grit are different. Passion alone, without persistence, still doesn't always put you in a position to accomplish what you want to accomplish. The key around grit is to build the persistence, to build this notion that 
There is nothing that will stop me from accomplishing what I want to accomplish. And I don't care whether that takes two weeks. I don't care whether it takes two months. I don't care whether it takes two years. This is what I'm passionate about. My persistence is gonna match that passion and I'm gonna go out and do some unbelievable things with this life of mine. I often set a goal. Here's another one of the questions from the scale. I often set a goal but later choose to pursue a different one. How many of us that are listening right now know people in our lives or you yourself are one of those people that create a new idea every day? And then tomorrow comes and you'll create a different one. This is where you lack grit. This is where you lack grit. One of the other questions was, I'm a hard worker. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Are you, do you consider yourself a hard worker? More importantly, would the people that know you, would they consider you a hard worker? I have difficulty maintaining focus on projects that take more than a few months to complete. And these are just a sampling of the questions. And the last one I thought was a great one. I have overcome setbacks to conquer an important challenge. Can you work through the shit? We've talked about that a lot. One of the themes that I think you'll notice has resonated throughout a lot of these episodes is in order to get where you want to be in life, you have to expect to work through some really, really tough stuff. The tough stuff is inevitable. And if you're not willing to work through it, the likelihood of getting where you want to be is not very high. There's some really good news in all of this. Some really good news. Before I tell you what the good news is, I did take the scale. I scored a 4.30. I tried to answer the the questions as honestly as I could. And so I I currently sit within the top 20% of all American adults who took this scale in terms of my level of grit. Is there stuff I need to work on? Absolutely. Would I consider myself to be a gritty person? I would, and I'm proud of that but there's more work that needs to be done. The good news around all this research and the reason that I wanted to share this notion of grit with you is we can grow our grit. And it, and here's what's great about grit and this research. It can be taught and learned to anyone at any age. That old adage of you either have it or you don't, it's just not true, folks. If you don't have it, you can build it. You can create it. If that adage was true, and I want you all to think about this for one second. If the old adage was true that you either have it or you don't, what would be the point at all in this life for people who don't have it? Because this is something that you find out early on in your life. You're either that person who has it or you don't have it. So if you don't have it, what would be the point? The good news is, if you don't have it or you know it needs to improve, it can improve. This introduces us to a concept called growth mindset. And I'll give you a real simple definition of growth mindset because I'm gonna talk about it in a later episode. It's gonna require more than just a simple brush over of the definition, but I wanna sort of frame your way of thinking as you approach this week or the days that lie ahead around growth mindset in developing grit. When we think about growth mindset, it's just a fancy way of thinking about your life this way. It has nothing to do with how good you are at anything right now. It has everything to do with how good you want to be at that thing or things that you intend to carry out with passion and persistence. So when you think about where you're at right now, I want you to ask yourself, not how good you are, but ask yourself how good you want to be. I think that will help you a lot think about thinking in thinking about where you want to go and how you're going to get there. Just a couple things to think about as you work to answer those questions. And this is something that we'll talk about when we talk about growth mindset. For those of you that exercise or train or run or bike or swim or 
do CrossFit or power lift, any form of exercise, any sport, you do it, hopefully because you love it, you've committed to it, you've shown persistence, but it also changes your physical, mental, and emotional health. You notice the changes. We don't view our mind the same way, unfortunately. So on one of our episodes that's going to follow this pretty quickly, we're going to talk about the most important muscle of them all, the brain, and how we can grow grit because we can. We absolutely can. One of the things I encourage you to do this week, I'm going to give you just a couple takeaways. I want you to start to make a list and don't beat yourself up too much. Okay, this is a slow build, folks. It is truly a marathon, not a sprint. It is a slow, slow build. But I want you to take just one thing for this week. I want you to write down one or two of your flaws or imperfections. And the reason that I want you to start with that, because until we acknowledge our weaknesses, we can never overcome them. Until we get very real with the things that we struggle with the most, not the ones that we put aside because we're afraid to deal with, but once we get real honest with our imperfections, then we can grow. Until we acknowledge where our faults are, until we acknowledge where the foundation in our lives is cracked or broken, we can never rebuild. So for this week, I want you to think about those one or two imperfections that you know you really need to work on, but you've been avoiding for whatever reason. I want you to think about those as a way to grow. And I want you to write them down. Acknowledge that they exist. And that's the first step in overcoming and growing. I recognize that this is something I need to work on. I'm no longer going to hide from it. I'm going to embrace it because I know when I do, I'm going to have a chance to grow and be better than I ever was before. I highly, highly encourage you to take a look at Angela Duckworth's work on grit. You can find her again at AngelaDuckworth.com. It's a phenomenal website. It's an easy read. Pick up her book, Grit, Passion, and Persistence. As always, folks, I am so very grateful for those of you that have tuned into the show. Your continued support and love for the show continues to drive me to do what I love to do. A special thanks again to my good friends Dylan from Cloud9 Marketing Group and Donnie Cav from Seven Roads Media. I'd like to thank our sponsor for the show, Team Strength 261. You can find them on all forms of social media at Team Strength 261. And as always, folks... Another 24 hours in a day to get better. There's no rewind button in life. Wishing you all the week that you go out and earn. Be good to those you love. Let them know you love them. And win today. Thank you to Seven Roads Media and Cloud9 Marketing Group for co-producing the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Without you, I cannot continue to do what I love. You can follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real John C. Martin. I'd love to hear from you, so please reach out with comments and questions after each episode. Your comments push me to get better every day. As always, thank you for your continued support, and don't forget, win today.